thought in the first half we definitely had a few chances. Uh, if we could have gotten a force there, I, I felt like we could have turned the game, but we gave up a couple of deuces. He kept the lead of the scoreboard, and then as the game went on, we had to take a little bit more risk. Is that what the eighth end was about, just the risk versus the rewards? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, we all know the, the stats out there, and the eighth end's pretty critical when you're down a couple. And played a hard shot for two and really just missed it by a sliver. So what tomorrow? To be honest, we played great against them yesterday. We played great against Brad today. A um, few things we can tighten up, but looking forward to a good game tomorrow. All right. Uh, congratulations, Brad. The margins in this game so slim, and you made every shot of consequence. How do you continue to do this in these big games? Um, it's just fun. It's fun to be the only sheet out there on great ice, playing great teams, and. I just enjoy it. I, like I, I just, I was excited to go play today. I didn't care what the result was. I just wanted to go out there and enjoy it. And you know, looking around at the crowd, enjoying where I am, and and uh, how grateful I am to have the opportunity to play in front of thousands of people on and millions of people on TV. Like it's, it's a great opportunity. It's fun. It's what I practice for, and I love it. In a game that you were pretty perfect at, was a one shot that was a turning point for you? You were so many surgical shots. Uh, you know what? I, I, I think I think that little hack weight tick that I made in the uh, the end we forced them. I think it was the sixth, maybe. Um, I didn't have much of that rock, you know. And, and if I tick the guard there and he wraps one around the center, we could give up three. Instead, we got a force there, and, and that was that was a heck of a shot. Mark called it perfectly. And, it was, that was awesome. How many thousand kilometers away from home? And you got the home crowd advantage uh, tonight. That, that had been pretty cool. Yeah, we, we travel well. Um, we got some good supporters. And, and um, you know, I think being here for as long as I have, we've gained some fans over the years. And, and listen, there's Newfoundlanders everywhere. So, uh, you know, that's they come out and they support us. And, and I absolutely love it. I'm thankful for all of them that come. And, you know, to see the Guju girls up there, see my family, and, and see all the other supporters, the Newfoundland flags, the Canada flags. You know, it's pretty awesome. Cheering for anybody tomorrow? Uh, I'm hoping they both lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brad, the, um, I guess the importance of taking the most efficient route to the final. Yeah, I, we're not young. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and, you know, getting uh, getting there efficiently is important. I think, you know, tomorrow we went that route last or two years ago and uh, three years ago. When was it? Um, we went there before and, you know, it's a challenge to play that semifinal and then to turn around and play the final again. Um, you know, last year when we, we did get right to the final, it was nicer. You could prepare, you know, you can get a good night's sleep. Um, you know what your schedule is going to be like. You know, having to go through that semi is a challenge. But if you come through it and you're playing well, you can get some momentum rolling. So I don't know if it's a huge advantage, but for us, I'd rather go this route than go the other. Route. This is a little here. bit more. Sorry, I was just going to mention. You know, just a little bit more, less wear and tear on. I have yeah. to bring it up the hip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. You're you're 100 right. We're going to practice tomorrow anyway. So if you play two games and, and then have a practice, like it's almost like a, a three game day, and, and we don't play many of those anymore. So um, I'm, I'm glad we're going to avoid that situation. Brad, it's eerily similar to 2017 when you were 2-2 two and two after a loss to the Northwest Territories and you didn't lose another game. You're on that path right now. Have you figured out the blueprint to winning the Briar? Because it was a bit of a slow start here and you just keep building. It's a long week, but you continue to peak in these big moments. Yeah, if I was going to develop a blueprint, it wouldn't be this way. <laughs> It'd be uh, win them all and win them all easy. But um, really, I think for us, the, the blueprint is just stay patient and know you're not going to have your best games. And just, you know, you got to hope for your best games to come at the end of the week. And you also got to hope that you get a little bit of luck. You know, a team like Botcher or McEwen can come out and play 100% against you and, and, and you can lose even though you play a great game. So we know that's possible tomorrow. Um, you just got to go out and see if we could curl a 90 to 95 percent game and, and get a miss out of one of theirs and, and capitalize on it. That's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, you, it's kind of out of your control. You just play as good as you can and, and see, you know, how the roll the roll of the dice goes for you. And, and uh, you know, I'm aware of that. I've been here enough that, and I've lost enough that I know that that can happen. You know, you can be beat by a great team. On that note, I think this will be your eighth. Yours yeah. and Mark's eighth final. Yeah. And so, I mean, you guys are used to all this, a lot of big game experience, and how much does that help you? It, it does. Like, I know the nerves are going to be there. I know I'm not going to be able to eat as much tomorrow and, and all that stuff. So, that's not going to surprise me. It's not going to make me no, more nervous. It's actually going to get me excited because I know that's that's the feeling that I want and that I want all year. And, you know, when you go play in events and curling clubs and you don't get that, I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> so to have it here, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. I'm pumped for tomorrow and, and look forward to it. 
You mentioned a win ago that you were hoping your team would find another notch. Do you feel like you found that notch? Yeah, that was that was a pretty well curled game. You know, I thought um, I thought we executed really well. We didn't make any big mistakes. Uh, you know, a couple half shots here and there, a couple rolls that didn't go perfect. But that's going to happen. Like, you know, you're not going to be a hundred percent perfect. You know, even the hundred percent games are not really hundred um, percent. So, it, you know, I, I know we stepped it up a notch, but. You know, if we can find even another half a notch or, or so tomorrow, just to, just to put more pressure on whoever we play, I'd love to see us do that. How would you compare how you were feeling ahead of winning your first one to now? It just seems like you and Mark and these guys just seem to soak it up. Like, I can see that you're really enjoying this. You're, you're enjoying stepping into these big moments rather than, than fearing it. Maybe, right? Well, the, the first one in St. John's, I was... Uh, you know, it's a Newfoundland expression and it's a bad word, but I was shipping, um, you know, going into it. It was, I was so nervous. Um, I actually didn't enjoy that experience as much as I would have liked. I enjoyed the celebration after, but um, the whole lead up to that, we were so nervous, we were so uptight, we wanted it so bad that it was actually remarkable we played that well. I think once we got through that, we realized, okay, let's, let's enjoy this, let's have some fun, and it freed us up. And, and now I'm at the point, and I've talked to you the, about this before, where if I win this or, or, you know, we pull out the win tomorrow, it's not going to change much in our lives. So, you know, and if if we win, great. If we lose, we're going to be upset for, for a couple days and we're going to move on. Like, as much as we want to win, we know this is this is not a, a huge life-changing event for us anymore. Um, so it takes a lot of the edge off, and, and we had a lot of edge in 2017. But there's a couple of teams here for their own reasons who want to win this thing really bad. Yeah, and, Brendan's and, won it like yeah. once, and he didn't have any fans in the stands, but he did. <laughs> yeah. And obviously Saskatchewan, we don't yeah. need to say anymore. And like, you can want it too much? You, you can. And, and uh, I'm not saying I don't want it any less than they do. It's just I know that, it, it, for me, that, that comfort in knowing my life's not going to change that much. It takes it takes some of the edge off. That's not to say I don't want it as much as they do. Um, but playing at home, if it's Mike, you know, that's a challenge. Like I said, in 2017, we de dealt with it. You know, Brendan's been a great team for a long time. You know, been to the finals a bunch. So there's that pressure for him as well. But, um, you know, you're going to get over it eventually, right? You're going to get over that hump, and, and I hope it takes both of them one more year to get over it so we can uh, we can have a good night tomorrow night. But, yeah, all I'm focused on is, is us having a great game and playing as well as we could and see what happens.